This video is going to cover one of the touchier subjects in the Tesla community. Tesla's early service struggles have been well documented in the media and there's factions within the Tesla community that are divided on the subject. There are also YouTube channels out there that have covered in detail some of the hardships they or someone they know have encountered. Channels include Zach and Jesse from Now You Know, Rich Rebuilds, and others. However, I'm not here to discount those that reported on their hardships. As long as it can be backed up with facts, I'm glad that those stories are being shared. Problems kept in the dark will never be solved and it's important to speak out if one feels like they are not receiving the service they deserve. This is especially important when you have a company like Tesla that listens to feedback and tries its best to fix it. This video is purely my perspective given that I have a unique background and I have been following the company for a decade. Plus many of you have been asking me to publish a video like this for a long time. And so after 15 years of car ownership, six of those in a Tesla car, over four of those working in the service supply chain team at Tesla, and 10 or so months doing YouTube, here are my thoughts on why Tesla service is the best option for car owners. These are the three key reasons, vertical integration, manufacturing commitment, and Tesla's culture. Let's start with vertical integration. Tesla owns its entire service network, meaning Tesla hires all staff working at these facilities and all systems and processes are built and implemented by Tesla. This isn't just service centers themselves, but distribution centers and suppliers since Tesla manufactures some parts themselves. This means that Tesla has a lot of data behind every piece that flows through the network from suppliers manufacturing the part and sending it to Tesla to Tesla placing that piece within your car. Traditionally, there's at least three layers in a typical service network. There's a manufacturer, then a distributor, and lastly, a unique service location or body shop. These locations have their own staff, own systems, own processes, etc. In a traditional service network, that means optimizations that exist between these nodes are rarely, if ever, implemented. Each of these nodes are working to maximize their profit. This drives prices up in the long term. In contrast, Tesla is incentivized to reduce the cost of each node since it owns every piece of the puzzle. This drives prices down in the long term and it optimizes to maximize the number of cars that can flow through the service network, which drives down weight and service times. In other words, Tesla is incentivized to push as many cars as humanly possible through its existing network so that it doesn't have to spend money to build new centers, warehouses, etc. That means that over the long term, Tesla will be able to service a car at a fraction of the cost of a traditional service network, which is a big win for the consumer. Another benefit of vertical integration is mobile service which is where Tesla comes to you instead of you going to it. And it works because Tesla is able to accurately predict what parts are available where, where everyone's cars are, and create a platform through its proprietary app and other software to enable this relationship and do so in a way that makes sense from a cost perspective. Not to mention run its own fleet of repair cars employed and run fully by Tesla staff. A traditional service network would not be willing to do this due to the prohibitive cost of running this type of service due to staffing and the scale of traditional service centers. Not to mention that the software expertise required to make this happen would be a huge commitment by a manufacturer or service dealer network. In summary, vertical integration allows Tesla to optimize for the lowest cost possible while maximizing for the shortest turnaround time in order to service the maximum amount of cars. Over the long term, this is the formula that most benefits consumers. Next, let's talk about manufacturing commitment. Elon Musk, Tesla CEO, has been very open about Tesla's goal to make their cars as reliable as humanly possible, minimizing the chances of something breaking in your car and the costs associated to run this repair, both for the company and the consumer. The introduction of full self-driving, which will dramatically lower accidents due to human error, will further reduce the need for body shop work as well, which will be another win for the Tesla service network. This is in stark contrast to every other manufacturer whose survival is heavily dependent on the profitability of their service parts division. I did a video not too long ago outlining how GM and Ford, as an example, would be losing money if it wasn't from sales of their service parts to the dealer service network. This means that GM, Ford, and companies like it have an incentive to sell as many service parts as possible in order to increase their sales. This also means that manufacturers are not really incentivized to make as reliable of a car as possible. Make it too reliable, you stop selling as many service parts, your profits go down, you get the point. It's a saying well known in the Tesla community, the best service is no service. And when the CEO of the company says that, especially when they own the service network, then you know the business incentives are working correctly. And lastly, let's talk about Tesla's culture. From my experience across all levels, Tesla is a company that is never afraid to build things from scratch. And these are things that are oftentimes not built by other companies because they are hard to execute on, tough to make profitable, or very hard to manage. However, due to Tesla's culture of approaching everything from first principles, in other words, building everything in the optimal way, Tesla ends up achieving seemingly impossible feats. Take Tesla existing in the first place. There were so many doubters calling this mission impossible, yet look at Tesla 
now. As it pertains to service, Tesla has gone from having zero service network to having hundreds of service centers around the world with a supporting supply chain, mobile service, and distribution network. This was created with Tesla's own dime with zero outside help from scratch while achieving a production ramp not seen since the advent of the Ford Model T. But of course, achieving the seemingly impossible is not good enough for a service network. It needs to support the needs of the customer and ensure that there is delightful experiences and stories people can share in order to build trust. But when you have this culture of always striving to find the perfect solution and you couple it with Tesla's vertical integration and commitment to make every car more reliable than the last, you have a winning formula to constantly get better to the point that service becomes such a rare thing that gets talked about that it is essentially invisible. Is Tesla there today? Probably not. Is it important to continue holding Tesla accountable when they aren't meeting their own expectations? Absolutely. However, in my opinion, Tesla service network is by far my favorite service experience I've had in my car ownership history. And I'm extremely confident that Tesla will create a separation in service between itself and every other company, just like they have with their vehicle products that is going to be impossible to close by competitors. One could argue that in many markets, they are already there, but I'm confident this will be achieved in every market over time. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think about this video? Please drop it below. If you like this video, I would love it if you throw me a like. It helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Bye-bye. And we're done. Cool.